Welcome back to the Royal Society. We have a new painting alert. New paint, well, it's not a new painting, it's an old painting, but it's new to the Royal Society. New to the collections and we're very excited about it. Where is it, Keith? Uh, just behind us. Let's have a look. This is Charles Vernon Boys, who's a physicist and it's painted by John Collier. It's a nice picture, one of his best, I think. Now this painting is part of a whole bunch of goodies to do with Charles Vernon Boys that have come into the Royal Society. We're gonna look at them in just a moment, but first, let's have a closer look at this painting because it's brilliant. So Keith, he was famous for his work with soap bubbles, and that's what's in this picture here, isn't mm, it? Yes. So physicists love soap bubbles. They can talk about iridescence and that kind of thing. So he lectured to children on soap bubbles to begin with, and then he produced a very, very popular book on the subject. So he's not just a good scientist, he's a good popularizer of science as well. Like any soap bubble artist, we see he's got his fairy liquid washing detergent down there. That's right. It looks like that's the concentrated stuff. Yep. There's his mix there, because we that's can see right. it's bubbling up. And then in his apparatus at the top here, he's got a bubble on the go. We have got more of Boise's materials. Let's go up to the library and have a look at that. Yeah. Okay, now we've got a lot to get through today. These boxes of papers and other treasures, Keith, these have been donated by the Boys family? That's correct, very generously, because there's some great stuff in there. And, uh, well, open the box, Brady. First out of the blocks is a block. This should look familiar to people. So here's the portrait we've just seen, but it's been photographed and put on a copper plate for printing. Obviously, he'd kept this for himself in his, in his papers and collection quite like that. When you get the angle right, you actually see it's, all the It's quite beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, we mentioned that he was Mr. Soap Bubbles. And here are some versions of his book. Yep, it went through many editions, translated into various languages, and some of them are here. Here's a German version you can see. C.V. Boys, FRS, Fellow of the Royal Society. And you can see these are the copies he kept for himself in order to correct for the next edition. We can see he's written his corrections in here already. Oh, look at that. Nice pictures. Yeah, very good. Yes. Here's another little correction or addition that Boys has added to the book. This is quite nice. This is Marion Pollock from the author and uh, reader he married her. So he's written this to Marion Pollock from so the author before he married her though. Yeah, and it's not just the first edition of Soap Bubbles. He's written here, it's number one. So it's the first copy received. This feels more romantic all of a sudden. Huh? Yeah, she did run off with a mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> well. Let's move on to this very interesting box. This is full of letters, isn't it? Well, it is, and I think you'd be interested in quite a few of these. So this is a letter electing boys to the Royal Artillery Institution. Why is the Royal Artillery Institution making boys an honorary member, you may be asking? Mm, because he's very interested in high-speed photography of projectiles. This is in 1866. He's taking high speed images of cannons being fired. I think this is by someone else, but he's clearly collected it because it's part of his interests. This is before he's making his own experiments from the 1880s onwards. But we can see here that he's troubled to keep an account of it. And this little transcript tells you what's going on. Among the many applications of photography to the different branches of science since its first introduction, my attention has been called to one of a novel description to take the picture of a gun in the act of firing. If we look closely here, you can probably just see a wire coming along the bottom of the photograph. And what seems to have happened is that when the gun is fired, an electrical impulse is, is sent to the camera and that trips the shutter and takes the photograph. To this day, a lot of YouTubers make a successful career out of getting guns firing in slow motion. High speed photography, yes. And Boyce did that. He took photographs of bullets in flight and he was very interested in the shockwaves effects uh, in the front of, of the bullet. So uh, yeah, he, he's very much a, a prototype YouTuber. You know what they say, Keith, boys will be boys. Yep. So here we've got the illustration from his Soap Bubbles book, but look here, here's the original with corrections and captions, the handwritten part. Mm -hmm. Charles Vernon Boyce, he was a busy guy. All these letters and things in these files, Keith, they paint such a picture of the man himself. It's, mm. it's remarkable. His big physics problem was to measure the gravitational constant. So what's the value for 1g? And Boyce refined that measure and produced a very bulky paper for the philosophical transactions on the subject. So that's what he's interested in as a physicist. But what he's really good at is making the instruments that allows him to 
to do that. Clever chap. Yeah. He was interested in, in lots of astronomical phenomena, and he used some of his instruments to measure the temperature of the moon. Cool. It is very cool. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. When he retired in the 1920s, something very important happened, and you can see what it was from there. This map on the scale of 10 miles shows times and places where the total eclipse of the sun can be seen in England on June 29, 1927. They prepared maps so you knew where you could stand to see it, and here <gasps> it is. Keith. I know you like a map, oh. Brady, so I thought we'd get this out for a you. A map, eclipse, the moon. You spoil me. So here's the central line of the total eclipse. What's it running through here? Preston, Blackburn. Oh, look, Sunderland is just in the totality by the looks of it. Yeah, that's a bit far south. So my home is, is up in Northumberland. Oh, it's, it's, it's way up oh, there. Yeah, sorry, you're not going to get a good view of it from there, I'm afraid. I was trying to get you into the eclipse. I key. know. Right. Boyce has just got this in his collection because yeah, he's he, interested. He wants to go and see the eclipse. So you got your map yeah, yeah. to look at the eclipse. But of course, you need an object too. The eclipse here, a scientifically devised screen for viewing the eclipse. Oh. I knew you'd like this one, Brady. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Can I handle yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, I do. So you'd put this over your head. Yeah. Like so. That's right. And you'd be able to watch the eclipse. So. Rather you than me, I think. So basically it's pure black, but the yeah. sun's right there. I wouldn't try it. I really wouldn't try it. As we know, it's a very dangerous thing to do that. You don't think it will work? This is 1927, Brady. They hadn't thought of health and safety in those days. Do we think he used this to look at the sun? Yeah, I mean, it must be. That's just clearly why he acquired it. I think we better return them safely to the archives before you have a nasty accident, Brady. Keith didn't tell me this was coming, by the way. Yeah, this I is... thought I'd spring that one on you. This is a good object. We're talking about paintings and bubbles when yeah. we had eclipse goggles all the time. Well, this is why it's fun to be an archivist. You find these things tucked away. And you never know what hidden treasures lie in an archive. Let's you, you forgot dusty archive, Brady. The, on the dusty shelves <laughs> of the archive. Never call archive shelves dusty. It really upsets archivists. It does. This is one I like a lot. This has come from the Royal Society. Who's written this, Keith? Michael Foster, who's the secretary at the time. I have the pleasure to inform you that the President and Council of the Royal Society have, with Her Majesty's approval, awarded you a Royal Medal for your invention of quartz fibres, your improvement of the radio micrometer, and investigations in instantaneous photography, and the value of the constant of attraction. This was on November the 11th, 1896. What an honour. He had his medals melted down in, yes, in order to fund uh, pupils at Marlborough College, his old school. Wow, that's pretty... That's nice. That's pretty that's selfless. Nice. Well, have a look here, by the way. Just here amongst the papers, someone has sent him a piece of thermocouple wire. And the wire, the wire is there. <laughs> the wire is the still wire here. Is there. When you're a famous scientist, people send you things, you know, so that, that's clearly what happened in that. This is John Hopfield who writes, When I was a student some years ago, I was quite inspired by reading your book, Soap Bubbles. And I remember with pleasure many of the beautiful experiments that you depict there. From the nature of these experiments, I thought you might be interested in the enclosed material. So this is someone who was inspired as a student. That's right. Has gone on to become a scientist. And he said, I've taken these pictures and I thought you might want to see them. They're beautiful pictures, but also what a nice human moment. And we're mm. seeing here how these great communicators of science like boys inspire the next generation. There is a kind of slight proviso to that. So here's an obituary notice of, of Charles Vernon Boys. It's from the Physical Society and it describes his career, including his career as a teacher. You can see here, Sir Richard Gregory's very famous scientist, describes his own experiences of being taught. But here we go. Here's another side of the picture, namely that drawn by H.G. Wells. Boys taught H.G. Wells. So you can see here, boys on the other hand, he found too fast. As he puts it, boys shot across my mind and vanished from my ken with a disconcerting suggestion that there was a whole dazzling universe of ideas for which I did not possess the key. Wells thought CVB one of the worst teachers who has ever turned his back upon a rest of audience. <laughs> <laughs> Messed about with the blackboard, galloped through an hour talk and bolted back to the apparatus in his private room. That's what he was interested in. He wanted to get through the lecture to students very quickly so he could get on with his work. This is a great collection and you're really lucky that his family has donated it. It was a really generous act and it's been lovely just to go through this material and see it in depth. There are three shelves 
of early letters from 1660 to 1740. Now one letter in particular, right here in this volume labelled G, has been making headlines all around the world in the last few weeks. Something in here is a bit of a big deal and today we're going to get it out, show it to you and tell you the story. 